Let us pray. Father in heaven, we thank you for another opportunity to come tonight. Lord, we pray right now as we study the word of truth, right divided. We pray that we as saints in the body of Christ, that we would be encouraged tonight. That our understanding would be enlightened by the effects of working of the Holy Spirit in your word of truth, right divided. We thank you for all those who are tuning in tonight. And we thank you for the gospel, and that is that Jesus Christ died. He was buried, that he rose again on the third day according to the scriptures. And we pray if anyone just heard those words, the gospel of their salvation, and if they put their faith in the finished work at Calvary's cross, that they have eternal life. For the Bible said, for the wage of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Christ Jesus our Lord. We thank you for this opportunity. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, my brothers and sisters, tonight, Romans 12, 1 through 2 says, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercy of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, except unto God, which is your reasonable service. And it says, And be not conformed to this world, but be you transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is good and accept and perfect will of God. And Ephesians 4.23 says, Be renewed in the spirit of your mind. And one more scripture we're going to reference tonight is Philippians 4, 1 through 9, where Paul said, Therefore, my brother and dearly beloved, and long for my joy and crown, so stand fast in the Lord. This is Philippians 4, 1 through 9. Stand fast in the Lord, my dearly beloved. I beseech Iotis and I beseech Sente, that they be of the same mind in the Lord. And I entreat thee also, true yoke fellows, help those women which labor with me in the gospel, with Clement also, and also with my fellow laborers whose names are in the book of life. Rejoice in the Lord always, and again I say, rejoice. Let your moderation be known unto all men. The Lord is at his hand. The Lord is at hand. Be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. Let your requests be made known unto God, and the peace of God which pass all understanding shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Finally, my brother, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue and if there be any praise, think on these things, those things which you have both learned and received and heard and seen in me do, and the gospel of peace be with you. The spiritual battle for our minds, and Paul tells us to stand fast in the Lord. And when we can do that, we can rejoice in the midst of our suffering. As Christians, we have a new mind, my brothers and sisters. But may I challenge you, have you noticed that sometimes our minds get dirty? Have you noticed it need a periodic cleaning? How do you know that? Well, in Romans 12, 1 through 2, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercy of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service, and be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and accept and perfect will of God. It says that we not only are to present our bodies a living sacrifice, my brothers and sisters, but look at this. Holy except unto God, which is an act of reasonable worship. But we are not to be conformed to this world, but to be transformed by renewing of our mind in order that you may know what is the good and acceptable and perfect will of God. We are continually in need of renewing our minds, continually renewing our minds in the word of God. In Ephesians 4, 23, Paul says, be renewed in the spirit of your mind. In 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 21, Paul said, prove all things, hold fast that which is good. In other words, examine everything carefully, hold fast that to what is good, learn to think, refresh your mind, clean your mind, renew your mind. Our minds get dirty from what we put in them. What are, what, what are we watching and engaging in that's not of God? Our minds get dirty in the world. But Paul said, be careful and anxious for nothing, but in everything, we're going to get into this, by prayer and supplication, request, petition, with thanksgiving, let your request be known unto God. And the peace of God which passes all understanding shall keep your hearts and what? And minds through Christ Jesus. Notice minds 
in Philippians 4, 7. Chapter, Philippians chapter 4, these first nine verses we are given here a pattern, a truth that produces spiritual stability. Obviously, all of us who know and love the Lord Jesus Christ would affirm that we want to be stable. No one likes being defeated. No one likes being a loser. No one likes being beaten down. No one likes being depressed. No one likes falling under temptation and therefore to sin. No one likes persecution. No one really enjoys going through a test and failing it. We want to triumph spiritually. But look at this. When we look at our Apostle Paul, and many wonder, wonder if he's even human because he seemed to experience so much spiritual victory in the middle of so much spiritual warfare. But we must remember that Apostle Paul, he went through some of the same challenges and difficulties that we face. Talk about post-traumatic stress syndrome. I guess we should have expected this. Paul was afraid. And it's no wonder. Who wouldn't be? Think about it. He was stoned at Lystra, Acts 14, 19. Beaten with rods and jailed in Philippi, Acts 16, 22 to 24. Attacked by an unruly mob in Thessalonica, Acts 17, 1 through 9. Mocked in Athens, Acts 17, 16 through 34. Reviled in Corinth, 1 Corinthians 4, 12. And look at this, 2 Corinthians 11, 24 through 28, of the Jews, five times receive our 40 stripes, save one. That was under the Jewish commandments, Deuteronomy, Deuteronomy 25, 3. Thrice was I beaten with rods, once was a stone. Thrice I suffered shipwreck night and day. I have been in the deeps in journeys, often in perils of water, in perils of robbers, in perils by my own countrymen, in perils by the heathens, in perils in the city, in perils of the wilderness. Look what he went through. Notice five times, 39 stripes. And then he says in verse 28, beside those things that are without that which cometh upon me daily, the care of all the churches. He had that on his mind. It seems that almost everywhere Paul went, he was either verbally attacked or beaten. And all the while he kept preaching, my brothers and sisters, the gospel of the grace of God. And yes, in his free time, supporting himself by making tents. So when he finally made it to Corinth, he was surely tired and undoubtedly downright fearful, stoning and whipping and beating and vicious verbal assaults amidst a heavy load of work will do that to you every time. It was by the grace of God that he made it that far. But this was no ordinary man, of course. He had an omnipotent God moving in his life. And it was a vision of this great God which enabled Paul to get up and keep going. Acts 18, 9, and 10. I know I spoke about Paul being afraid. You think he didn't get a little fearful when he went through all these things? Look at what he says. Then then spake the Lord to Paul in the night by a vision. He said, be not afraid, but speak and hold not thou peace. He said, for I am with thee. If anybody just listening tonight, whatever you're going through, you ought to remember what God said to Paul. The Lord said, be not afraid. Whatever your situation is tonight, whatever you're going through, remember what God said, for I am with thee. And he's told Paul, and no man should sit on thee to hurt thee, for I have much people in the city. It was this word that enabled Paul to dust himself off and keep going in the city of Corinth for another year and a half before selling home and then doing it all over again. But notice exactly what God told fearful Paul in the vision of the night. He told him that he has, what he has been telling his people since Abraham, a command followed by a promise. He said, do not fear. I am with you. God's word to Paul followed a beautiful pattern 
in scripture that we see again and again as the Lord's remedy to help his children overcome fear. It doesn't matter what you're going through, the sufferings of this present time, the just life showing up, just circumstances, no matter what it is. It's about trust in God's word. When Joshua was about to take over leadership of Israel, the Lord said to him, have not I commanded thee? He said, be strong and of good courage. And look at this, be not afraid, neither be thou dismayed, for the Lord thy God is with thee wherever so thou goest. Joshua 1, 9. When David was walking through the valley and the shadow of death, he purposed, I will fear no evil for thou art with me. Psalms 23, 4. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil for thou art with me. Do you know that God is with you? No matter what you're going through, no matter how we're feeling, some days are better than others. But do you still know from the spiritual standpoint that God is with you? When God wanted to comfort his people Israel through the prophet Isaiah, he said, fear thou not. You see that? For I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. I will strengthen thee, yeah, I will help thee. I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. Fear not, for I am with you. Isaiah 41, 10. Yes, the presence of God, it chases fear away. For when he, when he is near, so is his love. And that perfect love casts out fear. 1 John 4, 18. And therefore, the most important thing, we can remind ourselves when we get filled with fear is that he's right by our side. This may be also why we are commanded to pray when we fear in Philippians 4, 6, and 7. So I don't know what you're walking through right now. Maybe it's anxiety, persecution, worrying. Maybe it's an illness. Maybe it's the death of a loved one. Maybe it's our children or our grandchildren. Maybe it's a divorce. But whatever it is, it's weighing on your mind. But whatever it is, if you have trusted in Jesus for salvation, then you are his child. And he has made a promise to you. I will never leave you nor forsake you. His grace is sufficient. This means he has given us all we need in his word. But the question that comes back to us, how is your stability tonight? Even though we want to rise above all of these difficulties in life, and even though we understand the sufferings of the present time, and the suffering for Christ's sake is something guaranteed in the word of God. The question is, how can we be stable? How can we hold our ground? How can we not be defeated and try up and walk in the victory that we have in Christ Jesus? How can we still face the sufferings of this present time and the suffering for Christ's sake and be joyous? Apostle Paul has given us our answers as how to rejoice in the midst of sorrows, heartaches, depression, when we think all hope is gone and it seems like there is no hope. Look at what Paul says in Philippians 4.1. He says, stand fast in the Lord. Stand against doubt. My brothers, that is a command. And that is the bottom line here in the text. Stand fast in the Lord. Stand against doubt. Stand against temptation. Temptation. Stand against trials and tests. Stand against persecution. But also notice the little word so. Or dustly or in this way. And Paul is saying, now I'm going to tell you how. Here's how you stand fast. And then he proceeds to give a number of disciplined principles by which we as believers can enjoy spiritual stability. But remember that this verse starts out with therefore. Remember that. Therefore, this verse starts out in Philippians 4.1. In other words, something came before we got to Philippians 4.1. Therefore means that something important preceded this verse. Paul is telling saints to stand fast in the Lord because what? Of the Judaizers in Philippians 3. He said there are some people, Jewish religious leaders, as noticed by concising, of which the saints at Philippi need to be aware of. 
He said these religious leaders are promoting something harmful, some false teaching. That's one thing you got to stand fast. You beware of false teaching that's going on today. Watch what you're watching. Take a look at what you're looking on television. False teaching is all around us. Satan has ministers, my brothers and sisters. The Philippian saints need to be on God, and so should we. Therefore also, therefore also in Philippians 4, 1 means that something imported preceded this verse. Now we look at Philippians 3. What else preceded this verse? Philippians 3, 20 through 21. He said, for our conversation, our conduct, our citizenship is in heaven. Stand fast, from which we also look for the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall change our vile bodies that we may be fashioned like unto his glorious body, according to the working whereby he is able even to subdue all things unto himself. If we are to stand fast, what we stand for should be worth it. I think that Philippians 3, 20 through 21 give us ample reason to take our stand in Christ. Look what we have to look forward to. My brothers and sisters, the way to stand fast and firm is to keep our eyes on Christ, to remember that this world is not our home and to focus on the fact that Christ will bring everything under his control. My brothers and sisters, And he's going to do it through the nation of Israel for the earth and for the heavenlies, the church, the body of Christ. Standing fast in the Lord means steadfastly resisting the negative influence of temptation, false teaching or persecution. It requires perseverance when we are challenged or opposed. It requires having faith to look beyond all the heartaches and the pains that come with the suffering of this present time and the suffering for Christ's sake. It requires by faith to look beyond this life of depression, mental illness, and all the different types of brain diseases, all the sickness and sorrow and pain because of death, all the tragic and catastrophic events that we encounter in this sin, curse, and present evil world. We are reminded that this world is not our home. We're just passing through. And while we're passing through, we're going to endure these things. But all but these light afflictions, oh, it's just for a moment, my brothers and sisters, in light of eternity and what we have to look forward to. Oh, something to shout about. It is a fact that we are in this world, but not of the world. We can help. We can't help but live in the society to which we were born, but we should not let this society keep us from standing fast. When we get too entangled with the things of the world, we get sidetracked from our commitment to Jesus Christ, from the work of the ministry, from what we have to do as ambassadors for Christ. We have to be involved in the workaday world, but we cannot stand fast. We forget that this world is not our home. Rather than thinking earthly, we should be focused on heavenly things. We are not God earthly people. That is the nation of Israel. We are his heavenly people. Read Ephesians 1 and 3. Ephesians 1, 22 through 23. And Ephesians 2, 6 through 7. That goes to some Bible study right there. We should be thus be thinking about God's heavenly program. Pauline doctrine for our conversation is in heaven. Philippians 3, 20. Our behavior should reflect the place which we belong. We belong to heaven and grace, not law. Grace is, op is the operating system for the heavenly places. Spiritual stability requires cultivating peace in the fellowship. We look at verses 1 of Philippians 4. We saw Paul's expression of love. We look at verses 2 and 3, and we saw how deeply he desired the unity of the church, and he wanted those two opposing women that we saw in verses 2 and 3. Yodas and Sinti to get together and he wanted the church to help them in the process. Why? Because individual spiritual stability is the result of corporate harmony or corporate peace. Paul said, let's get along. 
Let's be a one mind. You know what an assembly is like when it's all together on one mind? On the other hand, where there is discord, conflict in the church, it breeds insecurity to all kinds of problems. So the first virtue that is necessary for spiritual ability is peace. Peace. Not only does spiritual ability mandate cultivating peace in the fellowship, but also maintain the spirit of joy. Paul said, rejoice in the Lord always, he said. And I will say again, rejoice. The rejoicing. You would please notice in the Lord. Notice that. It's in the Lord. If you attach your rejoicing to your circumstances, it will come and go, which a lot of folks do. They're happy when everything is going well, but all when life shows up and they don't know what to do, their rejoicing has gone. No joy left now. But if we rejoice in the Lord, you know why? Because if you attach your rejoicing to the Lord, it will always remain the same because he never changes. Nor does his relationship to us ever change. Do you see that? He's going to love us regardless. He's not like some folks. They love you. They love you when you can help them out, uh, when you can do things for them. Uh, guess what? But the moment you're not doing anything for them, uh, uh, you ain't helping them no more. Guess what? Where's the love? It ain't there no more. It wasn't love in the first place. But with our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, if you attach your rejoicing to the Lord, it will always remain the same because he never changes. What did he say? I never believe you nor forsake you. You see that? So you learn to rejoice in the privileged union you have with Christ, which exceeds circumstances. So what is necessary for spiritual ability is a surpassing, overruling joy that is not subject to difficulties or circumstances or when life shows up. Spiritual stability requires resting on a confident trust in the Lord, resting on a confident trust in the Lord. In other words, where is your faith tonight? He says in verse 5, the Lord is at hand, near. Then in verse 6 of Philippians 4, so he said, for be anxious for nothing. What are you going to worry about when the Lord is there? If you understand who God is, and if you believe him, and if you believe in him, then what are you going to worry about? He surpassed every problem. He surpassed, exceeded every difficulty, every test, every trial, every temptation. So the bottom line here is how much do you know about God and how much do you trust God? If to trust God, you will surpass your difficulties because you will understand who God is. You will understand the purpose of God. You are understand that God is still in control and you will therefore be calm in the midst of your storm. No matter what you're going through, he's God almighty. Spiritual stability, it requires reacting to problems with thankful prayer. In verse six, you remember Paul said, instead of worrying about things, he said, pray. But he said, pray with thanksgiving. Pray with a thankful heart. It's called gratitude. When you think about what God has done for us, saved our souls from a burning hell. And now we have eternal life. And we're going to rule and reign with him one day. Oh my God. When a saint who has peace, the peace that the spirit of God produces, joy, a believer who is humble. You show me a believer who believes truly in God and you show me a believer who is thankful in everything and I tell you that you have a believer who is spiritually stable. Philippians 4, 6, be careful for nothing but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. Let your request be known unto God. Verse 6 about praying with thanksgiving. No matter how, Difficult to problem. If you rightly understand what you're going through, you should be thankful. It doesn't matter what you're going through. We can still be thankful. No matter what persecution, no matter what trial, no matter what temptation come your way. First of all, you can be thankful that it, there is the purpose of God. 
right? God is to accomplish some purpose. All things are working together for good according to his purpose. It is also there in the perfecting work of God. Through every difficulty, he conforms you more and more to be strong and to be like his son, more into the image of his son. It is also there is the provision of God for it allows him in difficult difficulty and your circumstances to manifest his care for you to show you that his grace is sufficient no matter what you're going through. Philippians chapter four, where Paul said, if you pray like that, if you manifest that kind of thanksgiving because you have that strong faith, you will find verse seven. What you said now, preacher, if you, if you, if you manifest that kind of thanksgiving, Yes, because you have that strong faith. Now you will find verse seven of Philippians four and the peace of God will guard you from being unstable, my brothers and sisters. The peace of God, my brothers and sisters, will bring tranquility and a contentment and a consolation beyond human device, beyond human explanation, beyond human understanding. When folks wonder, how can you sit? And, and you sit and everything around you, it just, it, all the turmoil and all the trouble and all the pressures and all the persecution, all the death that you see that you're going through, how can you sit and have that peace? My brothers and sisters, because I'm thankful. And I know that this world is not my home. I know I have a glorified body waiting on me. My brothers, I know I'm going to rule and reign with my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. My brothers and sisters, I have eternal life. Yes. He says, it really surpasses all comprehension. You know, when folks wonder, how come, how come he's so not, how come he or she is not so shaken by everything they've been through? All the, all the, all the catastrophic things that's been happening in their lives, all the troubles, my brothers and sisters. And if it guards you from instability, having a grateful heart. Paul is not through. He now reaches, I believe, the climax and another essential key to being spiritually stable and really the key to everything in verse 8. This is the major point that he wants to make, the high point. In order to be spiritually stable and experience a joy in the midst of our suffering, in order to experience peace, joy, humility, faith, and gratitude, we must be focusing on godly virtues. We must be focusing, focusing on godly virtues. We cannot experience godly virtues unless you focus on godly virtues. Verse 8 says, Finally, my brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue, if there be any praise, think on these things. Now, here the Apostle Paul sums up what he's been saying. The word finally indicates that he has reached the climax at this particular point. And this is the great, in a sense, the great summation of everything, the great key to all the other elements. And what he is saying basically summed up in the last phrase of the verse. Think on these things. Let your mind dwell on these things. Finally, my brother, whatsoever is true. Now, if you want to know what's true, where are you going to go to? The word of God. The truth is in God's word. 2 Timothy 2.15. Study to show thyself approved unto God. A workman that need not to be ashamed. Rightly dividing the word of truth. 2 Timothy 2.25. In meekness, instructing those that oppose themselves. If God peradventure would give them repentance to the acknowledging of the truth. These verses tell us that. So if you want to know the truth, you go to the word of God. It's the focus and the place of all truth. So if I'm going to think on whatever is true, I'm going to dwell on the word of God. First of all, and on anything else that is true, it's in God's word. Paul said, whatsoever is honest, and that means words of respect. Whatsoever is noble, whatsoever is dignified, whatsoever is reverent, 
The word really comes from a term meaning to worship. Whatsoever is worthy of all, whatsoever is held in high regard, whatever is greatly respected, whatsoever is worthy of adoration, that's what I think about. My Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, Apostle Paul said, whatsoever is right, and the word is righteous here. Whatsoever is in the perfect harmony with the eternal, unchanging, divine standard of a holy God revealed in Scripture. I'm going to think on what is true. I'm going to think on what is worthy of worship. I'm going to think on what is absolutely consistent with the holiness of God. And then he says, whatsoever is pure, meaning morally clean, undefiled, whatsoever is morally pure and morally clean. I would think on that, not on the other junk. Then he says, whatsoever is lovely, that means pleasing, attractive, whatsoever is sweet or gracious or generous or patient. And then he says, whatsoever is of a good report, which means well thought of. My brothers and sisters, we're going to pick up this spiritual stability next week. My brother said, so we're going to talk about when, when Paul told me when I turn on the television, on the television, that is, what am I going to see? When I go to the theater, what am I going to see? When I read a book or magazine, is, what am I going to see? We're going to talk about these things. What are we putting in our minds, my brothers and sisters? What's, what's, what's consuming all our time? Let us pray. Father, here we thank you for your word. We pray as those who listen in tonight. We pray that they were encouraged, they enlightened in your holy scriptures tonight. We thank you for this opportunity. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.